Welcome to Medical Matters Weekly with Dr. Trey Dobson, presented by Southwestern Vermont Healthcare and Catamount Access Television. Welcome, everyone. Today is Halloween, uh, and we are recording this show for November 2nd. I'm Trey Dobson, Chief Medical Officer at Southwestern Vermont Medical Center and an emergency medicine physician with Dartmouth Health. And this is Medical Matters Weekly, a show about the aspects of healthcare that matter to you most. My guest today is sports medicine physician, Dr. Yvette Gutman. She is a uh, sports medicine, as I mentioned, specialist at SBMC Orthopedics in Bennington with Dartmouth Health. Thank you so much for joining us today, Yvette. Thank you for having me. Um, let me just see if I can pronounce. You earned your medical de degree at the Univers Universidad Autónoma de Central America. Is that right? <laughs> and then tell us, where did you go to a pediatric residency? Yeah, so I did my pediatric residency in Puerto Rico, San Juan. And where are you from originally? I'll jump to that question. So I was born and raised in Miami. Um, uh, but, you know, a lot of folks say I have an accent and always wonder where that's from. Uh, but it's from Miami. This is what people from Miami sound like if they were born and raised there. My parents are Chilean. Um, but, uh, but, yeah. Uh, and so, then you have a bachelor's degree in biology from Florida State University. And, and then I'll just jump right in to say what brought you to Vermont. Yeah, so I actually did my sports medicine fellowship in Albany. So I was, you know, introduced to the New England area. Uh, and I loved the folks here. I loved the change in season because, uh, you know, in, in Miami and, and South, uh, it's really just summer and, uh, and rain. And so uh, I love the changing of the leaves um, and I loved the winter sports and, you know, the, the, ability to be able to do different sports in each different season. So between that and and the folks, the New England culture uh, and way of life, that's what attracted me. Do you go back to uh, to Miami? Uh, yes, frequently. <laughs> frequently, more frequently in the winter months, yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit real quick, you know, who is eligible to get a board certification in sports medicine? Yeah, so there's really five different types of specialties that can do that. And it's either emergency medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, family practice, or um, uh, a ped med, a combination of pediatrics and internal medicine. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and where are you right this moment? Just uh, the audience likes to know. Yeah. So currently I'm at the orthopedic office uh, uh, off of Dewey Street in Bennington, Vermont, which is where I spend uh, all my days. Great. And before we get into to what you do in sports medicine, um, just let me know a little bit about your background of how you got interested in medicine in the first place. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I don't really have that story that, oh, my parents, you know, are doctors or I had an injury and that's how I, you know, wanted to do it. I was born and raised playing sports ever since I was a toddler. They put a bat in my hands. Softball was actually one of the first sports I've ever played. Um, and then football was the second sport I've ever played, actually. Uh, but um, uh, I, I remember my mom actually recalls the first time I ever mentioned wanting to be in medicine and actually saying sports medicine. I was about 15 and I was at the roof uh, of our house uh, putting on the Christmas lights with my dad and my neighbor walks over and, and she's like, oh, what are you going to do when you grow up? First of all, I thought I was already grown at 15. Right. So at 15 you are, yes. Right. And and then I said I wanted to be a sports medicine physician. I, I, I don't honestly I don't recall that, but my mom recalls it clear as day. So um, no. I do love sports and that's probably, you know, why I grew a liking to that and uh, it's, it suits me very well. And and lastly, we talked about this a lot when you when you came to Bennington and joined, but tell us a little bit about your pro football career. Yeah, so um so, like I said, football was like the second sport I ever played because uh, my dad was all-time uh, quarterback for all the boys on the block, and we used to play outside every day. And so I learned a lot about football since I was uh, a kid. And when I learned of the opportunity that there was women professional football, uh, which is not flag football or worse, but 
really professional, you know, NFL rules. The only difference is that it's a, a, a collegial ball because women's hands are just smaller than men's. Um, I jumped at the opportunity and, um, uh, yeah, I had a wonderful, I had a great experience, a good time. I had a big injury, uh, but, uh, you know, my goal was to kind of bounce back from that injury, uh, which was a fractured dislocated hip, in case anyone out there is wondering. Um, it took me the next season to recover from that. Um, and then the third season, um, I, uh, I, I made a record of uh, seven passing touchdowns in a single game which since Nick Foles, Peyton Manning, and um, uh, Bledsoe has uh, um, tied my record. So, <laughs> so you're, but you're still on the, on the uh, plate on the wall, I am certain. Yeah, that, I mean, you have to remember, this is years That's a ago. Uh, so I, I, it's, it's years ago, so um, uh, it, it'll be difficult to, to find, but I have a, a letter from uh, – uh, Rudin kind of congratulating me and there's news articles, but, but yeah, we were a pioneer of the sport now picked up by, you know, the NFL, which is wonderful for little girls that want to grow up to play football. Um, and it's being big time sponsored now by Adidas and other big companies. So, I mean, it, it's wonderful how it's developed. On your injury, which sounds like a Tua Tungavaloa injury there. Um, how long were you out and did that really teach you anything for medicine? I mean, it is always good to have, you know, you don't wish this, but to experience the issues that your patients have. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, certainly, right. And I tell a lot of my patients, like, I, I, I get it. Like, I understand what it is to have to, you know, sit on the bench or on the sideline injured and, and needing to wait, you know, uh, to go back in and just for time to heal things. It was nine months total for my full recovery. I remember uh, it took me a very long time to walk again. Um, I, uh, I I started off with just like being able to jog for 30 second intervals. And I was yelling and screaming and saying that that was more than 30 seconds. That was more than 30 seconds. It was a grueling uh, comeback. But, you know, I had a goal. And uh, you just got to keep mustering along until you reach it. Yeah. And Tua, Tua's, Tua's uh, um, injury was thankfully completely different, right? He had a terrible concussion, and some would even say it was a second concussion syndrome. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that was that. Thankfully, I did not have a concussion. Oh, but in in um, in college, Tua had a fractured hip dislocation. That's what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, that's right. Yes, you're right. Correct. Sorry, I was thinking of the most recent injury. Yeah, well, he certainly been <laughs> yes, in the news for this one as well. He did. Yeah, terrible. Let's tell us about the conditions that you you treat down at the orthopedic office. I mean, of course, you treat hundreds of conditions, but what you mostly are focused on. Yeah. So um, some will think that you know, sports medicine. I just see folks, you know, that that participate in sports. Uh, or weekend warriors, and and I think that it's a bit of a of a misnomer. Really, sports medicine goes hand in hand in the orthopedic practice. And what we do is we pretty much see all orthopedic conditions that are non-operative. So if it needs surgery, then then you'll go and, and see one of the surgeons. But otherwise, I I'm fully capable of uh, helping to treat like arthritic conditions, uh, tendonitis, bursitis, fractures. Uh, you know, and, and, and do love all of the medley of conditions we see here. So. And you, I know you do a variety of treatment uh, options. In fact, you brought some treatment, diagnostic and treatment options using ultrasound and other things. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the novel approaches that you've brought? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, ultrasound has been a while, uh, around for a while. And what it does is that it gives us a better visualization of specifically joints that you're trying to target and get a small needle into. Uh, it uh, um, allows us to do this to have eyes really is, you know, how I describe it uh, without uh, inflicting um, uh, any source of radiology on them, right? Because uh, it's, it's just an ultrasound wave. And so you're not exposing them patients to that. Um, but also it allows us to inject, um, for example, your shoulder joint uh, inside the actual joint and specifically the hip joint, uh, which, you know, blindly you can't really do with 100%, you know, certainty. 
Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really opened up um, kind of what we can offer here. We can do it in the privacy of the office, which is really easy. And, uh, and patients do seem to do well with this. And it's just a, another kind of uh, tool that we can offer to our community that helps uh, alleviate some of their pain and discomfort and return them to the activity that they're looking to get back into, which sometimes is just life, right? Right, absolutely. You know, for some of those in the audience that are just kind of coming in or may not be familiar, we're talking about is is uh, Dr. Uh, Gutman's ability to direct a needle to provide uh, relief in and especially the, the smaller joints, you know, you may have recalled going into the emergency department or your uh, physician and receiving uh, either joint fluid removal or injection of medications. And, and I'll make this up with about a 90%, 95% accuracy, maybe doing it blind, but this allows 100% accuracy, knowing the needle tip is right where it needs to be uh, using, really today it's almost handheld uh, ultrasonography, which is been a major advancement in medicine. Again, not only in the orthopedic office, but also emergency department and, and other locations. What else are you treating? Are you seeing a lot of, um, of adolescents with their uh, ligamentous injuries? Yeah, so yeah, actually um, we do see a lot of adolescent injuries. Uh, some of them have ligaments, however, um, the youth have a stronger tendons, for example, than the adults and weaker bones. So mm -hmm. they'll come in with shoulder pain and, you know, the, the parent would be concerned that maybe the rotator cuff got injured. But in fact, it's, it's a rare case that you see a tendon injury in an adolescent or, or, or in the pediatric population. It's usually either a broken injury or a bony injury uh, or, or a ligament. The ligaments certainly are, are uh, also corporates in this patient population. Mm -hmm. And I know you have an interest in, in the preventative uh, care as well. What, what are you telling parents and, and athletes these days in regards to, uh, to their um, ability to prevent the injury from occurring in the first place? Yeah, so I think the answer is in the question, right? Prevention is definitely the best medicine. And what I tell a lot of um, uh, my, my patients, and I keep saying my patients because, again, it, I, I don't just see, you know, an athletic or sport playing population, I see uh, all, all populations uh, from zero to 109. But um, uh, I tell them that uh, flexibility without strength is injury and injury without, without uh, or sorry, and, uh, flexibility without strength is injury and strength without flexibility equals injury. And so you really have to have a wonderful, delicate dance of the two. And uh, I think that that Musculoskeletal health uh, really is a huge um, component of muscular health, and that includes uh, not just being strong, but being flexible, uh, using a foam roller, um, getting massages. Uh, all of this, I really think, is huge with, with prevention. Also, getting a proper warm-up, especially if you're returning to a sport uh, after either taking a season off or going, you know, on a month's vacation or coming back from an injury, too much too soon is the best recipe to end back up and to end up again in our office. And so you really have to ease into um, the activity that you're looking uh, to get back into. Because in two weeks, you lose, you decondition. You can decondition in two weeks. Right, which is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. and, and then then you're really set up for further injury in, at that point. Right. Um, and I appreciate I appreciate your comments about uh, even though it's called sports medicine, uh, in a sense, we are all athletes of some level. I think that we've been unfortunately the victim of our own uh, type of uh, publicity in medicine, and I'm not talking about SBMC, I'm talking about around the country. Every sports medicine ad, has a 17 year old kicking a soccer yeah. goal when actually most of your patients are not 17 and most of them are not kicking a soccer goal. Correct. Correct. Have you seen things, um, that I'm going off a subject a little bit here, but change as far as immobilization and casting uh, through, through your career? 
Oh, have I seen a change in that? I mean, I, I still think that we're, we're casting for the things that require mobilization, especially in the, in the younger population. Adults don't tolerate casting as well, and they're a bit more, mm -hmm. I don't want to say obedient, but compliant maybe, uh, if we had to mobilize them. And so we have um, a different type of uh, bracing here at the office, uh, that technically, if they wanted it off, they could take it off. But, you know, they're adults and they understand that it needs to stay on. But it is more comfortable sometimes than a cast that will, uh, will, will put them in. So it just really depends on the injury, the location, the age, the compliance. You got to know your audience. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I actually asked that question because uh, when I started practice, I used to get a lot of questions of, why are you not casting this? They always casted the injuries. And I had to explain that uh, it's not just me, it's orthopedics as well. And the need to immobilize with uh, friendlier types of uh, braces uh, is, is important. So I just had one yesterday in, in the emergency department. So I thought I'd bring that up. Oh, yeah. um, tell us, you know, as, as we sort of finish up here uh, a little bit about your office. People can call and get an appointment. They have to call their doctor first and get a referral. What is the typical process? You know, I think it depends on their insurance. Um, if, if it's an insurance that requires a referral, then yes, uh, they would need to see their primary care physician first. Um, but if not, they can just give our office a call and we're pretty good. We can usually you know, squeeze them in a reasonable amount of time, which in my book is within two weeks. But if it's a returning customer, I usually like to get them in a little sooner. Yeah. And um, and I will just say, by the way, thank you and, and to your colleagues and your office staff tremendously improved the uh, access for uh, the patients in our community to get into orthopedics uh, over the past couple of years. And, and that's been a tremendous help. Uh, people don't have to travel and they're getting uh, such great care here uh, from not only yourself, but uh, all of your colleagues. So I hear that you were asked to do something coming up in the upcoming uh, World International Games in Lake Placid. So tell us about this. This may be the first uh, public announcement we've made. Yeah, so it's actually pretty exciting. At first I was nervous, but now I'm just excited about it. Um, uh, during summer, uh, I was approached by uh, the CMO of the, of the Games uh, to uh, be a lead physician in the upcoming World International Games in Lake Placid. And so um, I, I, you know, I, I thought long and hard. And honestly, one of the things that really pulled out my heart the most was, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be, you know, away from my patients for weeks. And is this OK? And, and, you know, I ruminated over that for a while. And then I was like, you know, it's going to be okay. I'm coming back. I can, you know, kind of make the tweaks that I need to, to make sure that, you know, they're, 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 you know, well taken care of, et cetera, et cetera. And this is honestly uh, something exciting that I can uh, do in my career. Uh, it's a lot of new uh, knowledge that I can also bring back to the community, to our patients. I think it's exciting for, you know, our community and our hospital. And so I would be manning the um, the men's ice hockey arena and all of the, the practices and, and uh, games and injuries that occur there. So, yeah. And then right after that, you have something uh, very similar, although at a different level. Yeah. So right after that, I have um, uh, another opportunity to uh, go uh, and be uh, a part of a volunteer rotation at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. And um, what that does is that's that's two weeks there um, uh, manning the medical facility uh, for all the uh, Olympic athletes that are currently tra uh, training in Colorado Springs. And what that does is that it doesn't guarantee me, but it enters me into a pool of medical providers that they can select uh, over the course of the next four years. So that'll be the summer games in Paris and then the winter games uh, in, uh, in Italy, in Cortina, um, in 2026. And, 
you know, I've always said I'm a lucky girl, so I'm hoping that uh, they they pick my name out of a hat when when that time comes and I can uh, you know go and be a U.S. team physician, and that'll be an amazing experience um, and to bring back uh, to everyone. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm super excited about it. Oh, it's very exciting. We are all rooting for you, uh, and and we know it will happen, and it's fantastic. Uh, so great. Thank you so much, Yvette, for joining us today on Medical Matters Weekly. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much, and thanks for all the support. We appreciate it. I'll also thank Mike Cutler from CAT TV, Ray Smith from Southwestern Vermont Healthcare, and Ashley Jowett from Southwestern Vermont Healthcare. I'm Trey Dobson. Go out and find joy in everything you do, even in the face of adversity, and we will see you again next week.